help the flood, all that you're going to see today. And so they write the check. Okay, but with that being said, let me start off with anyone that knows me, we're going to probably start starting stuff in decency and in order. And what we're going to do, I'm going to ask everybody to do like me right now, turn your cell phone down. <laughs> so we don't have a rubber. Uh, Judge Murray, if you don't mind, sir, I'm going to ask you to please come up and uh, actually do the prayer for us as we wait on our uh, guests, Congressman Lewis and a few other guys that are still that are actually making their way through the, uh, through the crowd. Go ahead, sir. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. You know, in about an hour or so, uh, the parade will start. A mighty parade down the main street of the city of Paris. And when you look at that word, parade, you find the word for that, the word parade, right? a mighty procession, or a... Speak of that so they can hear you. Or a, uh, a celebration. And today is truly a, a day of celebration. We celebrate our community. We celebrate our leaders. We celebrate the city of Fairburn. We celebrate where we've been. We celebrate certainly where we are going. And we celebrate the goodness of God. And you don't have a celebration without giving honor to where honor is due. Amen. And that's Almighty God. So I would ask that you, if you could please stand with me now and join me in a word of, of prayer. And as I <clears throat> bless the, the breakfast and the food that we're about to receive. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just give you the glory and honor and the praise today. We just give you the, all the honor that you are so rightfully deserving of. We thank you, Lord God, for this gathering of these mighty people here today. We thank you, Lord God, for the love that you've shown for us in your grace. You said in your word, Lord God, that we should, first of all, honor those who's in positions of authority over us. So we pray, first of all, for our nation. We get to operate and serve in a, in a great nation such as the United States. We pray for the United States of America. We pray for our leaders, our president, our vice president, all of our elected and appointed officials. We pray for every state and every governor, every mayor, Lord God. We in particular, Lord, pray for this day. We pray for the city of Fairburn, Lord God. We pray for its leadership. We pray for its mayor, its mayor-elect, Lord God, all those that are in positions of leadership. We pray for this day. These events today, not just the parade, but all of the events today, Lord God, that you keep it safe, Lord God. We bind the spirit of anything that's not of you, God. There's no terrorist attack. There's no crazy person coming around shooting here. This place is in peace today because of you. We plead the blood of Jesus over that right now. Those who's in positions of authority, those elected and appointed officials, Father God, remind us, Lord God, keep us room and mindful of our charge. Our charge is to serve and not to expect to be served. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for what you've done. Yes. Thank you for the food that we're about to receive today, that it blesses and it nourishes our bodies. Thank you, Lord God, for your glory. But most importantly, thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name that we pray. And if you can agree with that, would you say together with me, amen. 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 Praise God. And at this time, as our guests are coming, as our, some of our other guests are coming in the room, if you've got an empty seat next to you, would you please raise your hand? We want to make sure everyone, uh, Mayor Hannah, Mayor Hannah, uh, you can come on up here with me, uh, actually, if, if there's a seat at the table with the other, Fairburn. Okay, if you got it at the table, you can come on up here, Mayor Hannah, it's fine. Actually, I see it. There's someone sitting there. At this time, uh, we're going to go ahead and, we're going to go ahead and get ready to get served. Can I, can we start, can, can we start this way, ladies and gentlemen, can I start, if you don't mind, from, can I start at the tables that are right there by the, right there by the, sure everybody has taken time to eat, has everybody been fed, if not, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and get going, uh, we shouldn't have many, many, many people left to eat, uh, what I'm going to start off with, uh, first of all, I want to just thank a couple of special people that are here today, uh, he's not in the room, but I want to thank, uh, the, the, the department that's responsible for a lot of this that's happening. If everybody can take a seat, please, or we can go ahead and get started. I want, first of all, I want to thank a couple of special guests that's here. We, we, we really thank so, so much for our, our, our uh, host, I guess you could say, of this affair. If, if you hadn't heard it on the radio, Portia Fox wants to say thank you so much, so much for being here. She's got to eat and run, so I'm not going to, I'm not, you just give her a hand. Thank you so much. She's blasted this over the radio the last three or four days. 
I uh, want to uh, give uh, honor where honor is due as well. We, again, we want to thank uh, Congressman. You always honor the highest ranking person in the room. want to thank uh, Congressman. Would you just give him a hand, Congressman John Lewis? I want to also uh, thank uh, uh, the department. The department, and they're not here, they're running Ms. Payne. Uh, Ms. Shep, uh, Shape and Payne, I thought I saw in the room the department head of recreation as well as Dr. Parks who's running around right now trying to get these bands and all these other people together. Uh, I want to also give a, a special honor for a few people we've got. I want to welcome, and uh, it, it's not officially done, so I have to just say uh, we will be soon to be the great city manager of the city of Fairman, Ms. Ms. Gaten. Would you please stand and let, let anyone see you? She's all the way from, she's all the way from Illinois. So, and so I, I also want to just thank my sister. My sister is uh, running around. Keely, is she in here? I see. Her. Okay, thank you so much. I want to thank a couple other people, and then we'll get started with a video, and then I'll come back with a speech. I just want to thank a couple of great people that's very important to me personally. Uh, my mom, my mom is, uh, uh, as she told me, I'm her Barack Obama, so I, I want to, <laughs> and I want to thank my mom and her husband for being here. Mom, thank you so much for being here today. It's my mom sitting here. <laughs> and I want to thank my partner, my love, the lady that has kept me in step and has kept me lifted up in prayer for eight years, almost eight years. Uh, my beautiful wife, my love, uh, the founder of Avery Financial Services, Diana, that's her standing up in the black deck. And I apologize if I've missed any great... If I missed any, that's it. That's the gentleman that's the, the spearhead of a lot of this. It's right there in the orange shirt looking shell shock. That's <laughs> Dr. Parker. <laughs> want to thank you so much for being here. And again, I just want to thank all our city staff. I see several of our city staff here. I just want to make sure I don't obey them out. A lot of them are standing at the door. Would you raise your hand? Ladies and gentlemen, these men and women are working hard trying to pull this together. And then finally, I want to honor a lady that this building is actually named after. She's the longest serving mayor of the city of Fairburn uh, for 20 plus years. And this building is named in our honor. This campus actually, that we're standing here at the Betty Hanna Education Complex. And that's the, the name of the mayor, Betty Hanna. Mayor Richard Ray Hanna, and our husband, Ray. Thank you for being here today. And so with that being said, uh, I've got a lot of other mayors, I've got other people that are still on the way, but I just want to say again, thank you guys so much. Again, this is, uh, as, my, as you know, this is my last, uh, this is my last hurrah. And I just can't say enough uh, about for the members of council. And let me thank those South Fulton mayors. We take for granted those that serve with us in our region, but these, uh, would you raise your hands, all the mayors of South Fulton. I see several of you in the room. These men and women and several, these mayors, and then all the other mayors, if you raise your hand, I see Mayor Finch over there, Mayor Peachtree, see with you, all the other mayors, the Tyrone, uh, the Mayor Augusta, I thought was here, but, uh, Sugar who? Sugar and Sugar Hill, yeah, is he, is he, is he here? Oh, okay, <laughs> so all these, <laughs> and, and, and so, and then, so I just, I thank all these other mayors, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, uh, I've, I've been blessed to be, to meet some men and women that, uh, that uh, uh, endow with the title of mayor, and uh, again, it's uh, between the U.S. Conference of Mayors, the uh, African American Association, these organizations, along with National League of Cities, and then, of course, an organization that all of us understand the value of. Georgia Municipal Association, the CEO, the, uh, the standing in. Would you raise your hand, sir? I want to give everybody that all of us understand the value of this organization. And so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and with further delay, I'm going to go ahead and roll this film, and then I'm going to come back. Effective leadership, team building, and a vision for the future by the city of Fairburn has created an economic boom unmatched in the region in 2010. The new mayor's vision and mission supported by city council, the business community, and city staff helped develop new housing and improve the quality of life for Fairburn residents. Fairburn is located 15 minutes south of Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport along I-85 and is home to a CSX railroad hub. This gives Fairburn businesses direct access to air cargo, trucking, and rail transportation. This also attracted major corporations and small businesses to Fairburn, which creates employment and increases the city's share of property tax revenue plus grants economic stability for years to come for all. Google developed a 1 million square foot distribution center which services the search engine giant's technical needs in the Southeast United States. Smuckers completed the second phase of their manufacturing and distribution center and now has two buildings, both measuring 1 million square feet each. 
Sunoco Packaging has a deal with Duracell that occupies a 873,800 square foot building and brought close to 600 jobs to the area. Fairburn increased the credibility of its public safety in 2016 after being ranked in the top 9% of the safest cities in the state. Fairburn Fire Department is also ranked among the best agencies in the state as well. A number of new businesses were developed along Highway 74, Cracker Barrel, Taco Bell, Starbucks, Marco's Pizza, Bojangles, Hardee's, Dairy Queen, Firehouse Subs, Shane's Rib Shack, and Verizon. Higher education continues to be a top priority in Fairburn. The city has spending negotiations with Atlanta Metropolitan College to bring a satellite location to the Betty Hanna Education Complex. The new executive living at Solstice on Oakley Industrial Boulevard offers 308 apartment homes of luxury living with direct access to I-85. This community represents the newly expected upgraded living quarters by corporate companies and executives. The Fairburn Senior Center is an 88-unit housing development located next to both Fairburn's police and fire department headquarters. Senior citizens can enjoy their golden years in a safe and comfortable place. The newly renovated Duncan Park Pool and Splash Pad offers outdoor fun for the whole family. The Eric Berry Football Complex is a state-of-the-art sports facility that gives Optimus and high school teams an NFL-quality field on which to play. The Frankie May Arnold Stage and Courtyard brings people from all walks of life together for live music and holiday celebrations. Hello, I'm Mario Avery. It has been my honor to serve as the Mayor of Fairburn, along with City Council members, and together we have led the charge bringing new businesses, job opportunities, housing development, and outdoor fun for everyone, which increases the quality of life for all. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the former city employees, administrators, and elected officials that served with me the past eight years during Fairburn's economic boom. They, like the current city staff, administrator, and current council members, work diligently to make Fairburn the successful city it is today. The city's current credit rating is equivalent to a personal credit score of 800. This is a great example of the city administrators, past and present, being fiscally responsible and respecting how we spend your hard-earned tax dollars. I would like to personally thank Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle for his role in bringing Google to the city of Faber. This project, along with Schmuckers and Duracell, increased housing demand for those workers which launched the construction of executive living at Solstice Apartment Homes. I would also like to thank the Fulton County Manager and the Board of Commissioners for their assistance in the acquisition of Duncan Park. This opened the door for negotiations with the Eric Berry Foundation to develop our state-of-the-art football complex. I want to also thank Fairburn's pastors and pastors in the region who consistently pray for our city and the business owners who contributed financially to the annual Fairburn Fall Festival. This event has hosted as many as 18,000 plus attendees and will continue to grow with our business community's financial support. Today, Fairburn is one of Georgia's safest cities. Thanks to our first responders, Fairburn crime rate ranks among the lowest in the state of Georgia, and our fire and rescue departments are better trained and equipped to respond to emergencies. As I move on to pursue new dreams, I want to thank my wife, Diana, for supporting me during my two terms as the mayor of Fairburn. In closing, I want to thank Fairburn's residents for trusting me with their vote. That is something I held dear and will forever be grateful for you giving me the opportunity to serve. Thank you for the time we share and I leave you with the accomplishment that made this great city one Fairburn, one family. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to just uh, prepare as we uh, uh, introduce uh, to some and just an icon in our community, in our country, uh, Representative, uh, U.S. Representative John Robert Lewis, who was born in February uh, 1940 and is an American politician and a prominent civil rights leader. He's a U.S. Representative of the 5th Congressional District, serving since 1987 and is the Dean of the Georgia Congressional Delegation. His district includes three quarters of Atlanta. Lewis, who is the Chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, was one of the big six leaders of, group, of groups who organized the 1963 March of Washington, played many key roles in the Civil Rights Movement and his actions to end legalized racial segregation in the United States. 
Lewis has been awarded many honorary degrees and is a recipient of numerous awards from eminent national and international institutions, including the High Civil Honor, the President Medal of Honor. At this time, I introduce Congressman John Lewis. just a good-looking group. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for inviting me to drop by. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for all of your great and good work. Thank members of the City Council and all of the elected and appointed officials, not just from Fabron, but throughout the state of Georgia, for being here. Now, being an elected official, the, the former mayor who serves for so long, thank you. Madam Mayor, thank you for your service. It, it's not easy these days to be an elected official. It's not easy to be the mayor of a city. But somebody must do it, right? It's not easy work. But uh, as others were said, we got to do it, we must do it. I remember when I was a little boy growing up, not in Georgia, but in rural Alabama, be out there working in the field, picking cotton, gathering peanuts, pulling corn, and my mother would say, boy, you're falling behind, you need to catch up. You need to catch up, you're falling behind. And I would say, Ma, this is hard work. And she would say, hard work never kill anybody. I said, well, it's about to kill me. <laughs> so as elected officials every single day, we do our very best. You may have you've done your very best. Amen. And thank you. <laughs> We're very grateful to you. Fabron, this growing city, short distance from Atlanta Airport. But the metropolitan area, including all of the towns and local neighborhoods and communities are going to take off. The state of Georgia will become the center, become the capital of the Southeast. Because of the Atlanta Airport, you're going to see continued growth and development. And people from all over the world want to come to this state. They want to move to Georgia. And I think the Olympics had a great deal to do with it. But you know, for the most part, we have great weather here, yeah. right? right? Every now and then, we may have a little a storm, some rain, a little wind. But we, we, we have good weather. And when I'm in Washington, the first thing I like to do is get on that flight and make it back to Georgia. Amen. And I see so many of my colleagues, other members of our delegation, rushing to the airport to get on a flight. Now, I don't want to be a little biased here, but we have a, a home base airline. Some people say, are you going to fly here? You're going to fly there? Uh, I don't get in trouble, but it's what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. I tend to fly Delta because it's home base. And sometimes I go out of my way when I'm flying other parts of the country uh, to get on the home base airline, Delta. We m must all continue to work together to look out for the common good and the greater good. There was a man by the name of A. Philip Randolph, who was born in Jacksonville, Florida, moved to the city of New York, and became a champion of civil rights, human rights, and labor rights. When we were planning the march on Washington in 1963, he was said to each one of us, maybe our forefathers and our foremothers, all came to this great land in different ships. But we're all in the same boat now. 
He would say it doesn't matter whether we're black or white, Latino, Asian American, or Native American. We are one people. We are one family. We all live in the same house, the American house. We must look out for each other and care for each other. Work together and pull together. And this is what Mayor Avery has been doing as mayor for eight years. Yes. And I said to the young people here, to the children, look what is happening in Fairburn, in the other cities. Look what has happened in our state and in our nation. Dream dreams and never give up. Never give in. Be the best that you can be. And one day one of you can be mayor, governor, a senator, a member of the House of Representatives. Maybe one of you one day can be president of the United States. So never give up. I want to thank all of the teachers, all of the educators, for all that you continue to do. Thank the police officers for serving us and doing their best to keep our cities and our towns and our communities and neighborhood safe. Thank the teachers for teaching. Hand been for teachers, I don't know what would have happened to me. Continue to inspire people to find a way to do what I call get in the way. To get in good trouble, necessary trouble, to help make our country and make our world community better. I'm going to tell one little story, and some of you heard me tell it from time to time. Mr. Mayor, when I was growing up in rural Alabama on a farm, in 1944, I remember when I was four years old, my father had saved $300, and a man sold him 110 acres of land. We still own this land today. And on this farm, we raised a lot of chickens. And it became my responsibility to care for the chickens, and I fell in love with raising chickens. I wanted to be a minister. And we would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard, like you gather here in this hall, and we would have church. <laughs> my brothers and sisters and cousins would line the outside of the chicken yard, and I would start preaching. And when I look back on it, some of these chickens would bow their heads. Some of those chickens would shake their heads. They never quite said amen. But I'm convinced that some of those chickens that I preached to in the 40s and the 50s tended to listen to me much better than some of my colleagues listen to me today in the Congress. And some of those chickens were just a little more productive. At least they produce eggs. This mayor, this mayor had been very, very productive. So we should wish him well and the very best and thank him for eight years of unbelievable and good service. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. At this time, because I'm trying to make sure we don't really stick to our schedule, I saw a couple of other great people walk in, and uh, one of my one of my dear friends, the longest serving mayor. We've got the longest serving mayor in the House of Fairburn that's here. We've got the longest serving mayor in Alabama, Mayor Ford. I see him sitting over here in the corner. That's uh, Mayor Mayor Ford. He's, he's, the, he's the founder of the U.S. The African American mayor, the world mayors, and he's this man is a mover and a shaker. So you might want to shake some hands and kiss some babies before you walk out of your mayor. <laughs> uh, next, and again, I see my, my municipal judge. I thank the judge, the federal judge that opened up in prayer, but I want to give honor our municipal judge that keeps our residents uh, there. Either either they're paying a fee or they're cleaning up our streets. So, and uh, she's a great. She's turned our court 180 degrees. Thank you so much for being here, Judge Ewan. But I want to uh, quickly. I want to quickly, uh, just, uh, uh, because I'm trying to stay on our schedule, I want to quickly introduce a guy that many of you guys have known. He was the chief of the ex SBA. He was appointed by President Barack Obama. And uh, this man brought more money than to the SBA in, in, in terms of loans. As a matter of fact, uh, one of our cities, local cities, I believe it was Union City, actually prospered substantially as a result of your office. And uh, thanks to Mayor Williams and his great leadership, that they were able to take advantage of a lot of what he was able to do with the with the uh, SBA. But uh, without further again, I have, I have your bio, but uh, because I'm short on time, I'm just going to go ahead and bring you up, sir, and, and then I'll come after you and we'll close. Uh, 
if you know Mayor Avery, he loves to be on time, and I can appreciate that, so I'll be very quick and very brief. I wanted to just first say, uh, Mario, Mayor Mario Avery, uh, I've known him effectively for over 25 years now, but I want to say that when I think of Mario, I think of my scripture that tells me that to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Uh, rather in humility, value others above yourself. And that, that is exactly what Mayor Avery has been, not just to this community, but to me as a person and one of my best friends for a quarter of a, a, quarter of a decade. Uh, really today, ladies and gentlemen, my bottom line is really just to say thank you to Mayor Avery. Uh, I was fortunate to be in a position appointed by President Obama during eight terms. And we, had, we formed a strategic alliance with uh, the city of Fairburn, the first time it has ever been done in history. And I'm glad to say that we were actually able to bring over $30 billion in the region, uh, particularly over $15 billion here in the state of Georgia during that tenure. And it really has come through a lot of strategic alliance. I want to thank Mayor Avery for that. I want to let everyone else know here today, this is just not the end. Now, for all of you all who are serving, whether a Democrat, Republican, left or right, we are all God's children under one unity. And the bottom line is that that is a message that Mayor Avery has served and preached since he came here, one fair and one fam family. And I want to make sure that today, if anything else, I'm not sure if we did, if we did not, but if you are not a veteran, if you are not a veteran and you are able to stand, will you please stand if you are not a veteran? And please stand this, at this time so we can acknowledge our veterans. If you are not a veteran, please stand and let's give a round of applause for our veterans. We always like to make a point to acknowledge those who have served. We are on this beautiful campus. Mayor Avery is a veteran himself. But again, I want to just let you know that thank you very much for your service. This is a beautiful day. And also just remember, if you don't remember anything else, that your passion is your purpose, and your purpose is your plan. All right. Whatever you're passionate about life, that's your, that's your whole purpose. Build a plan around it. Doesn't matter who you are, who's behind you or in front of you. Do exactly what you were set out to do. And that is exactly what Mary Avery has taught me, and I want to thank you very much for your friendship. Thank you for your prayers when I didn't know how to pray for myself. And he can pray. <laughs> And then thank you very much for you and your beautiful, beautiful wife, Diana, who I know has supported you and helped you to make and become a better man than where you were eight years ago. Mayor Avery, thank you very much. Thank you very much, First Lady Mary Avery's uh, beautiful wife, Diana Avery. Where is she here? And she, I just saw her a little while ago. She's standing there. Where is she? She worked. She worked. See, that. here you go. Here you go. Well, let her know. Thank you very much, Mayor Avery. Let's give her a round of applause. And ladies and gentlemen, I, would, um, I had a long speech that I'm going to actually slice in half, actually two, one fourth. And say, say thank God for that. <laughs> I heard you, Mayor. My good friend, Mayor Dixon, over there from Riverdale. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, what I just want to make sure, first of all, as we prepare to uh, prepare to try to get ready to go down here to this processional. Uh, what I'm going to ask, first of all, uh, I'm going to do something that's in my spirit, so I'm just, if anybody knows me, I'm a firm believer. We, we're going to touch and agree. If you will, if you're at the table with anybody, you can just put your hand on someone. We're just going to say a quick prayer over this event and over every, and then uh, then I'll, I'll, I just want to say a few words of encouragement and we'll be ready. Father, we come before your presence with thanksgiving and to your course with praise. Father, we thank you that this is a great day that you've made. We're truly glad in it. Father, we thank you for every elected and appointed official in this room room right now. We ask that you make a mark in this world that will never be erased. We ask that you pour life and life abundantly through them, around them, and toward them. Father, we pray that the men and women that will be standing on the streets right now, all the parade participants, allow them to be an honor where honor is due. We pray and just ask the wisdom from above for every appointed and every person that's in a leadership position. And we said thank you and we call this parade blessed in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me just say this much, ladies and gentlemen. I just, again, I just something I want to just leave you with as we prepare to, um, like I say, as we prepare to get ready for the parade. You guys can hear some of the bands outside. Again, I, there's just so many people in here. I can thank you. It. Just, unfortunately, it would just take me too long to thank everybody in this room. But I want to first of all thank the members of the 
Fairburn City Council and all of those that have served previous council members right now. I want to personally say thank you and publicly thank you because what you saw in that film, ladies and gentlemen, wasn't Mario Avery. That was the mayor and the six members of council that actually accomplished that. And a lot of those previous council members that are, that are not here that I personally, and again, of course, and I want to give honor, well, honor to you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Hannah, because it was your vision and your administration that brought this beautiful campus and edifice here in the city of Fairburn. So I, I can't I can't say thank you enough. We're very happy because we, this is not often that you have the past, the present, and the future leadership of a city in the same room. So with Mayor, with Mayor Hannah, myself, and the Mayor-elect uh, Hearst right in the room, we're just so excited about what the future of Fairburn is going to look like. Let me say this much to our leaders and then... Uh, as we prepare, because um, again, uh, as you guys know, this is, most of you, especially you mayors, if you've had any events in your city, it is no joke trying to put an event this size together. And so I told him, I said, man, I sure wish I'd drink. I said, I could use a little shot of vodka like that. <laughs> I said, man, I said, my God. I said, but the Lord knows what he, he, he knows the vices that he can't give us. So I said, thank you. <laughs> I know that's why, that's what I'm scared of you. <laughs> but, uh, and I said, let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, this, this, this a couple of things I just want to give you leaders and leaders in this case are appointed and official supervisors, whatever leadership position and again, I, I saw my good friend here he took, I hadn't forgot about what you, you, the shot you took at me, uh, Mr. D.A. a couple of years ago with my wife and we know you, you, made, you made it clear that my wife was in charge I heard something the other, I heard something the other day and I thank God for my wife but I, I was listening to sports radio and I'll start with leadership, understanding understanding the value of people that's in your life. I heard something on the radio and I thought it was the funnest thing I've ever heard and as a gentleman, if you ever listen to 680, the fan, I don't know if Chip, Chip uh, Domino, Chris Domino, and Chris, if you know Chris, Chris is a very straight shooter, and the guy that serves with him, I won't, I, I'll just keep it real nice. The other guy kind of goes off a cliff periodically. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to work, and uh, that morning, me and my, my wife had just got through uh, kind of laying the wood to me about my dress code. And, uh, and so I, I'm on my way to work, and I heard Chris Domino right after the Falcons game, and he says, you know, he said, it comes a time when a man just got to do what a man's got to do. He's got to be a man. And so the other guy, the other co-host, jumps in, yeah, you know, he's got to let the people in his house know what he's doing. He's got to let them know he's the man. And Chris turned around and said, yeah, that normally happens when the wife's out of town. <laughs> So, and so I, I just laughed and I said, Lord, thank you. And so I say that because, <laughs> I say that, <laughs> and I say that because, ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't have done this by myself. It, it has taken the partnership of the South Fulton mayors. A lot of what you saw is not just, it's, it's in Fairburn, but it's the manifestation of partnership. Actually, uh, one of the mayors that's become a very good friend, he actually changed the obligation that he could, so he could be here. Mayor Bodie sitting right in front of me. I just want to thank all these. I think all these mayors from Alabama I had two, one from North and South Carolina couldn't couldn't get here because of the been in this the city. But here's what I here's what I've learned, ladies and gentlemen, seven years of, of, of being in leadership. Let me say this to you. To the degree that you lead privately, that's the degree that it will manifest publicly. I need you to, I need you guys to hear that, leaders. I need you to hear that. Whatever you sow privately in your leadership, that's what's going to manifest publicly in your leadership. I need you to understand that that's a value that I, I've learned uh, while I was wearing a mili military uniform and that, that turned out to be a, a very, uh, a, 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 that's a landmark, benchmark management uh, uh, strategy for me. One of the things I want you also to understand, to the degree that you love others privately and put their interests first privately, that's the same measure it will be revealed and it will be returned to you publicly. There's some of you right now that have been asked, you, and, and again, leaders, here's one of the things, here's what great leaders do. We cover our brothers and our sisters. Well. Meaning, that, meaning that when other brothers, and, and the only difference between some of us and some of the other mayors and other legislators that's, got, that's gotten busted illegally, the only difference between you and them, one got caught. <laughs> The only difference. The only reason my younger brother, my my younger brother who went to jail when we were in high school, the only difference between he and I, he got caught. Okay, and so I say that is to let 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 us remember that one of the things of real leadership, we are willing. It has a point. Real leaders, you have to be at some point willing to become a little vulnerable to let people know that you have the same issues in life as anyone else, and let them understand that you go through some of the same differences that they go at home. The only difference between you and them is that your your position is a little more visible. The only difference. I want to say this, and I, again, I'm not going to be long because I, I, I cut this speech completely and, and just chopped it up. <laughs> but I want to say something to leaders, and that's pretty much everybody in this room. 
to the same degree that you follow someone, that when the tables turn to the same degree that you follow, that's the same degree you'll be followed. Uh -huh. I need you to know that. Yeah. A lot of people have asked me point blank, how is it that Mayor Avery, you were able to get, uh, actually my pastor's, my, my pastor asked, his wife, uh, Pastor Taffy, asked me about three or four years ago, how are you able to get all those people to come to fair? And I said, well, first of all, truthfully, you're the prayers of the righteous is what did it. I said, let me just be very candid with you. I said, but the other part of it is, people understand when, and as Judge said it so well, those that are willing to serve, if you are in leadership and you're willing to serve, and I mean, that means serve other people, and that means not bragging about what you did for somebody else, but helping other men and women because there will come a time that you will need to be served or you will need to be helped. And I think a lot of the men and this women in this room, and I thank God my mother uh, taught me this, is that I watched her serve my entire life serve others and matter of fact it was six of us so we, we had to go we had to go lacking some because she was too busy she was outside serving others but again what that does that turned me and my brothers and sisters into servants and so I want to thank your mom because again I, I'm, a, I'm a replica of what you were actually doing on a smaller scale years ago thank you so much I read a book and, I, and I've got three minutes. I read a book from John Maxwell. I've read several of his books, and most of you guys know he's a one of uh, awesome, awesome leader. And John Maxwell talked about uh, uh, seven traits that of leadership, and I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to make them real quick. I promise you. Great leaders, according to John Maxwell, uh, they lead and uh, make sure I say it right. Great leaders pray uh, for, on a regular basis for seven things. They pray for faith, for guidance. You, you have to ask for God. There's no way in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just be straight up with you. It's been the prayers, and again, I, and I, I actually want the spouse of one of my intercessory prayer team. And I'm not, I say what I'm about to share to you. I don't say this to be uh, spiritually deep, but I'm just going to show you the sincerity of it. I have an intercessory prayer team. There's, there's about five of us now, and I've had different men and women rotate. And every Friday morning, I think we missed one Friday in eight years so far. Every Friday morning, 6 o'clock through a conference call, we pray over the city of Fairbanks. Let me say this to you leaders. If you don't have somebody with you praying, I'm not talking about somebody that can publicly brag about that they're your prayer warrior. I'm talking about somebody that will pray for you and pray for your mission and your vision. You need that. I, that's the only way I made it. The, uh, he also talked about the uh, great leader leaders their fulfillment. You, uh, great leaders pursue what they are called to do at all costs. Whatever it takes for you to get it, you go get it. Legally. Let me make sure I put that in there. <laughs> great leaders, uh, their faithfulness over their assignment. Great leaders, you're faithful over the assignment, meaning that you don't do anything in private that can't be revealed publicly. Just that, that, that's, that's about as good clean as I can say it. The, uh, two, the last two is their fellowship. True friendship and uh, real leaders understand the value of real friendship. Let me say a scripture that has made my life, and, a, and this is a representation of it. There's a scripture that I live on that says, to find a friend, you must first show yourself friendly. That means sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, when it's inconvenient, let me say this to your leaders, and I'm gonna say this to you, Mary Lett, because she, she's a servant too. But let me say this to all you other mayors. Mayor Ford, you, you, you taught us this at the African American Mayors Association. There's going to be times, ladies and gentlemen, when you get up, and the only reason you're going, you're dog tired, you've been traveling, and a congressman actually just came from Washington, came in. I, I thank you, sir, for being here. But let me show you the difference what, called, what, what is called real friendship. When nobody else would do it, you knew, understand, I need to go there just to support. I need to get up and go to this function or whatever it is, and that's going to be the difference as we're going to return it a hundredfold for you. Leaders, I thank you because there's been many times that I thank God for my wife who's held me accountable. A couple of times when I got up in the morning, was on Saturday mornings and was somewhere I was supposed to be, and she would walk in the room, honey, uh, aren't you supposed to be somewhere today? And I said, well, uh, me, uh, well uh, no, man, you told me the other day you were going. And I, and I, I walk, you know, I, I walk out the room because I'm like, man, I really don't feel like going. And I thank God for a partner that helped me accountable to that so I would value and represent what real friendship is. The final, the final uh, document I had is, is what is called uh, the sense of family. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. our families is the difference of day and night. Uh, most of you in here have got children, you've got spouses, you've got husbands. And let me say this much to you, I thank God for my wife because I, I've been gone a lot for the last eight years, a lot. And let me say this much, at the end of the day, our children are watching what we do as leaders. 
And so at the end of the day, a lot of you guys are grooming great, uh, great leaders. I've got my two godsons in here with me today that you'll see. And, and the reason I brought them here because I'm making a point as often as I can to share with them what and expose them what, what great leaders look like. I wanted them to see up close what you look like. And so again, as we go out, you may have heard me on the radio the other day, and I think I made this statement two years ago, and I said, I'm going to ask you to do me one favor as we go down the parade route. I'm going to ask you to refrain from using one phrase. I mean, y'all remember it. I'm going to ask you, would you please refrain from using this phrase? Do you know who I am? Okay? I, because this today, t today, we're all somebody, including those people out there. Here's what I need you, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I, we, our staff has bust their tail. Again, you know, only God can control how many people actually show up. I, I vowed that uh, to Dr. Parks, Ms. Payne, that we would do whatever it took, whatever level of advertisement for Portia Fox for 41,000 copies of the South Food to neighbor newspaper. That's because I want to ensure, and then that was my prayer, Lord, give these elected and appointed officials and these people that's in the parade, give them an audience that will celebrate them. I'm asking the Lord to celebrate you today because I think every single one of you, I do. I can't name you by name, but I think every single one of you. Some of you have been the difference in terms of, I, I look at the collaborative firm, I'm all these different organizations, state representatives, my mom, and the whole nine yards. Everybody in this room has played a role in Mario Avery. Here's what you, uh, Congressman, uh, uh, Congressman, you may not have known. I'm one of the few mayors that's known outside the city of Atlanta that's born and raised in Atlanta. Okay. A proud Atlanta Falcon fan. Yes, we, a, a proud Atlanta Hawk, you name it, Atlanta. I love it. And so, but I wanted to say this, to today, ladies and gentlemen, we're not in Atlanta, we're in Fairway. And so, and so today, I'm asking you, as you go down, I'm just, my prayer is that between, between the time we get in the vehicles and get to the other end, that you are celebrated by these people that are on the street. And, uh, right now, if it all goes well, it should look like the battle of the bands. And so let me say this much, too, and I want to thank you mayors, because a lot of you mayors, uh, right now, uh, I want to thank you for your authorization. You're going to see more police than you've probably ever seen at a police convention. I want to thank, I think we've got 15 police departments from Alabama State Patrol, the State Patrol, you name it, and fire department. So my goal was, my, as my wife said, she said, oh, you didn't bring them, you didn't bring them trucks and police cars for, for them grown folk, but you said, you brought them for you. And I said, <laughs> and, I said and, and, and we know kids love fire engines, and I said, well, you might be right there, honey. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but, but today, let me say it as I close up, I want to just say thank you as we get ready to actually uh, you need something to get, come on up? Yes, ma'am, come on up. And I, as I'm closing, I'm going to close with Miss Payne. Come on on up. Okay, thank you. I thought today's parade was fascinating. Are you about to go? I was trying to be Congressman John Lewis. And uh, I thought the parade was great. The favorite part in the parade was the bands. The bands was excellent. The ones from Alabama State University and also Talladega University. I thought those were excellent bands. I enjoyed the whole parade, uh, the marching bands, the horses, uh, seeing the high school bands, the kids enjoying themselves in the kids. Great event. Okay. I thought today's parade was awesome, amazing, uh, and I was. So you told me it was bigger than it usually is. It's bigger than it's ever been, and I thought that um, including all the others, to come in and be a part of the parade was a very good thing, good idea. Very good. And the bands were out of sight. The dancers, that was my favorite part. I wanted to see more of that in that parade. It was just, it was all just so amazing to just see it come back. It's my first time back in the parade. Actually, her favorite part was she got to see a lot of her old classmates from Camel High School. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 I did. Old friends.
It was just making people happy. That was the only thing I can say I like about it. It was just making people happy. Everybody got up, they came out, they enjoyed themselves. The music, everything was playing in the background. Just come out and enjoy yourself. I mean, okay. It was a good parade. Thumbs up. Absolutely. I want to say uh, to me and Mario Avery, uh, who's also my twin brother, um, from Bishop Stancil, Manly Stancil, and I, Maria uh, Stancil, we just want to say we wish you well. Thank you for everything that you have done in the city of Farron. We know that God has some great things in store for you, and as you embark on um, other um, other dreams and embark on other positions, and as you're going through the right of passage, we just thank you, and we just thank you for all the, all the love. All of the uh, progress that you have made down here, we love you, we wish you well, and we will always, always support you.